Okay, let's take a look at the distance between a point and a plane. What we're going to do in this video is derive the formula for calculating it, and then we're going to look at an example and work through the calculation. So we have a point, and we have a plane. Genetically, the point is x1, y1, z1, and the plane is ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero. What we're going to do is um, look at the distance between the point and that plane. But what do you mean distance? There's infinitely many distances. And so what we mean by distance is the shortest distance. Straight down, perpendicular, drop down would be the shortest distance. So here's how we're going to find that. What we're going to do is grab another point. This point is going to be on the plane. Call it p naught. Satisfies that equation. X naught, Y naught, Z naught plugged into that equation would be a true statement. AX naught and BY naught and CZ naught plus D will be zero. And what we're going to do is connect um, P naught to P. Look at that vector, uh, P naught to P1, the vector from P naught to P1. Right? And P1 is the terminal, P naught is the initial. So we'll call that vector B, and it's going to be P naught to P1. X1 minus X naught, Y1 minus Y naught. Z1 minus Z0. Okay, great. Now we have the normal vector to the plane. How can we look at the equation and know what that is? It's the coefficient on x, y, and z as the i, j, and k components. So a, b, c is the normal vector. Now it might not be actually reaching up to that point, but it doesn't matter. We can always stretch it or whatever, but our job is to use that normal vector to help us find the distance. Here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do is um, connect, the, connect the two points that are on the plane. And um, we are going to project the vector B onto the normal vector. And with that, then, we're interested in how long that projection vector is, because that will be the distance that P1 is from the plane, from that point that's perpendicular down on the plane. Capital D, we'll call this distance. Okay? It's a magnitude of a projection vector. It is the scalar projection. And we find that by taking the dot product between the vectors and dividing by the magnitude of the vector that we're projecting onto. Okay? We're great. We have the vector N, who's ABC. We have the vector B whose components are right there, and we're gonna take the dot product. Now, dot products can be negative, but we don't want distance to be negative. So the numerator has absolute value bars on it so that we can make sure that distance is positive. The denominator, those bars that are down there, they're actually magnitude bars, because what's inside is a vector. Okay, great. And so we dot product, and we get A times X1 minus X naught, and B times Y1 minus Y naught, and C times Z1 minus Z naught. That's our dot product. Let's look closer at that, let's distribute. So we get AX1 minus AX naught, BX1, BY1 minus BY naught, CZ1 minus CZ naught. When we distribute, and what we're gonna do is group it in the following manner. You see, because x not y not z not is a point that's on the plane, when you plug into the equation, you should get a true statement. It should be equal to zero. And so what we're looking at is actually the equation of the plane with the ax and the by and the cz moved over to the other side. We have minus ax not minus by not minus cz not. And so this is exactly equal to the lowercase d that's in the equation of the plane. And this is our numerator to the distance, capital D. Denominator is the magnitude of the normal vector, whose ABC. So that's going to be the uh, square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And so we have exactly the formula for the distance between a point and a plane. It's AX1 plus BY1 plus CZ1 plus D. Absolute value bars around the whole thing just in case it's negative. And that's divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. All right, great. 
We derived it. Now let's use it. Point P1 is going to be 2, 2, 3. And the plane is going to have equation 2x plus y plus 2z equals to 4. We have our formula that we just derived. And in this formula, there are seven different numbers to plug in. We have to identify these numbers. We have the a, b, c, and d from the equation of the plane, and we have the x1, y1, z1 from the point. So the a, b, c are the coefficients on x, y, and z. So two, one, and two. The, the uh, x1, y1, z1 are the point coordinates, so two, two, three. Be careful about the d, though. You see, in the format that we derived, we had d um, in the equation of the plane on the left-hand side. And so the equation of the plane was set equal to zero. So we should do that for this particular plane and move over the plus the, the four and subtract it over to the other side. And so shift this guy over here to the other side. And actually then that would make D equal to a negative four. Okay. All right, great. We have everything we need. Now it's a matter of just plugging and chugging. Algebra. We have uh, A times X1, so we multiply these two guys together. B times Y1, C times Z1, plus D. And if it happens to be negative, we'll stop absolute value bars around it. And we'll divide by the magnitude of the normal vector, 2, 1, 2. 4 plus 2 plus 6 minus 4. And then the denominator is the square root of 9. That's convenient. Yeah, that'll be a 3. And we can cancel these fours out. You know, without a calculator, it's helpful to do, look, look for things like this. And so the answer to the question, the distance between the point P1 and that particular plane is 8 thirds. All right. Good job. Here's your formula. We derived it, and we did an example.